Yay, we are live. All righty. Yeah, so here it is. It is. It is breezy, but it is blowing a, a hot, like oven air. Oh wow! Yeah. Good evening. Good evening to those that are coming, that are tuning in. Thank you so much for joining us. This is week four of um, the mental health series with myself and Charity Northen. Um, thank you guys that are tuning in. Please take the time to share this. We would really appreciate if you would share this with your friends, uh, share this on your uh, ministry pages and like pages and different things like that. Please help us get the word out and, and to spread this to as many people as possible. And so um, I see people are tuning in. God bless you again. Thank you for tuning in. And so uh, again, this is week four. Um, I think, you know, we we definitely have got a lot of good, uh, good feedback. We got a lot of positive feedback. Especially, especially from last week, uh, we got a lot of feedback um, from leaders um, that were blessed by the um, what we talked about last week was clergy in crisis, and a lot of people were blessed by that. And so, if you did not see that one, or if you missed the first week, which was counseling, the second week was deliverance, third week was clergy and counseling, cl clergy in crisis. Sorry. And this week, we're going to be talking about mental health and evangelism. And so I did want to let you know that those replays are available on Faith Solutions to Mental Health. That is a, that's a page that's, charity, that's run by charity. That is her, uh, her, her ministry. And so please go to Faith Solutions to Mental Health. If you haven't liked that page, please like that page. Go on there, like the page, and please go on there, watch the replays, share the replays again, and help us get the word out. And so um, I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Charity. Charity, kind of give us a lowdown and a, and a recap of what we've been talking about the last few weeks. Absolutely. You know, well, D'Angelo, first let me say thank you so much for just following God's leading with this and introducing this idea to do this for us. I think we all needed it. I think um, I've been enlightening, you know, just talking, you know, the Holy Spirit gives you utterance, even as you're talking about things that the body of Christ needs to hear, that we need to hear as practitioners, as those that are called into this ministry. And so um, I am just so overwhelmed with, with the information and how God has spoke during these last several weeks. Um, several weeks. And so what we did the first week for those of you who had not, were not here, uh, we gave an introduction of, of why we need to address mental health, especially in the body of Christ, especially among those who say they love the Lord, those who call on the name of Jesus, because what we've identified as is this mental health issue is something that we have not historically addressed in the church. And so we, we see it manifesting. One of the things that, that um, Holy Spirit showed me was that, you know, we're not, a, we're not addressing this. And therefore this is a cycle. You know, we go back to Mark five, where it says that um, they said, he said, what is your name? They said, we are, we are legion. Jesus said, what is your name to the man that was, had been scratching himself in the tombs. And Jesus said to him, what is your name? And that those, those, Spirit spoke out of him and said, we are legion for we are many. And the way the Lord really manifested that to me or showed that to me was that mental illness is not just one issue affecting us in one way, but it is many things. It is many issues that is affecting um, an individual person, uh, their family, their community, their church body, their neighborhood, our whole socioeconomic structure, if we go from a family systems perspective. Um, and, you know, DeAndrea and I are both certified and licensed counselors. And so a lot of our work is not just going to be, you know, counseling from a personal knowledge perspective, but certainly from a professional perspective. And so, again, what we talked about during that first week was just um, being able to address mental health um, in the body of Christ from a spiritual perspective, from that mind body and spirit, excuse me, mind, mind, am I saying that right, DeAndrea? Body <laughs> For my soul, my, you, you know it, you know it's been a, yeah. a long day. 
<laughs> but being able to address it because my belief is we cannot address our mental health without addressing our spiritual health. And so that was week one. We talked about that. We gave people, um, we told people why it's needed. No one has been, no one can really say that they've not been affected by mental illness. If it's not you personally, then it's someone in your family, someone in your church, something you've seen on the news maybe. Where, um, and I know when we first started this, there was the situation with the, the person that was a case manager who had gone on a killing spree. And one of the things that he has said was, um, that he, no one was there to listen to him, that he had been busy helping so many other people and no one was there to listen to him. And we see what happened, this tragedy um, that started out with someone who is in a helping profession. It, it, it ended in tragedy with him killing others and, and, and eventually him killing himself. And so we talked about that in week one because we know the enemy comes to kill, steal and destroy. Um, in week two, we talked about deliverance. We talked about how does the enemy get a doorway into a person's life? And a lot of times that happens through trauma. Uh, sometimes there's so many things. Sometimes we open the door ourselves through through indulging in, in new ages and practices and calling the psychic hotline and, and all of these things. Sometimes it can be drug abuse. Sometimes we, we open the door to, to these things ourselves. And, and not always is mental illness a demon. We, we talk about that. It's not, it's not always a demon. Sometimes it's medical issues. Um, there's so many other other things that can lead to this. Um, but deliverance is always in order. Deliverance is always in order. And we also talked about just the order of, of counseling, um, the order of healing and deliverance and recovery, because sometimes the counseling is going to come first, but sometimes that deliverance has to come first, depending on the issue, um, depending on where that person's at, because sometimes they're going to need counseling to sensitize them to, especially if they're not a believer, especially if they've not been living the ways of God, they're going to need that counseling to really um, sensitize them to what is it that God is wanting them, you know, sensitize their ears to start beginning to hear from God. And then we can go in and, and do deliverance. Um, and, and deliverance really is extracting what doesn't belong. Um, and then, and sometimes deliverance has to take place because that person is so tormented, so much in bondage that deliverance is going to have to take place. They're going to have to go to a deliverance minister. We also talked about, um, and cut me off anytime, but we talked about who you go who you go to as a as a deliverance minister you just can't go to anybody who 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 is not called to that we, we talked about everybody's not a deliverance minister um just like everybody is not a counselor everybody is not um gifted in that area everybody's not trained in that area not to say that they can't help but we talked about we don't want to begin to open those doors if we're even as a leader as a counselor whoever you are you see someone struggling especially if it's something chronic something um acute um something whatever it may be, if you're not trained, if you're not equipped, if you're not anointed, and if you're not willing to invest the time necessary to walk that person through, then you probably don't need to be the one to open that door for that person. And so we talked a lot about that. And then week three, we talked about um, clergy in crisis, which was very powerful. I know we, you and I, Deandre, had talked about um, just the I felt I felt the pull from it. I, I felt almost um, like my virtue had gone out of me, if I can say it another way. Um, there was there was a lot there was a lot from that from that um, from that video from that information. We know that a lot of clergy, a lot of leaders are struggling in their inner man, in their inner home, the inner inner in their in their privacy of their own homes, they're struggling with mental illness, they're struggling with depression, uh, mood disorder, they're struggling in a way that um, that only they can only they can really describe because they don't have anybody. A lot of leaders find themselves isolated. They don't have a lot of people that they can go to to say that share those experiences. Or we talk about the spirit of pride that stops them from going and getting help. And so, you know, that one was really powerful. Like Dean just said, if you missed that one, then certainly go back to um, Faith Solutions to Mental Health page. I know you can also find it on my page, probably the Andrea's page, um, and, and re and rewatch those videos. And so um, it was very powerful. Awesome, 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 awesome. Thank you for the recap. Oh, can you mute me? 
think you can hear me. I can hear you, yes. Okay. Um, we're, I'm kind of not going to go ahead and move forward. And so this week we want, we want to talk about where do we go from here? Um, there's a there's a couple things we want to talk about tonight because the, the main thing we want to make sure we're bringing to the body of Christ, we want it to make sure that people are becoming more aware of mental health. Because a lot of times what people have deemed as a need for deliverance or a lot of other things really has been mental health uh, and mental, sometimes even mental health disorders, mental health issues that have gone unaddressed and undiagnosed and, you know, people are really needing help. And so we want to talk about um, where do we go from here? And the first thing we want to talk about is how do we begin to educate the church? How do we get this information out to the body of Christ at large? It's like what we're doing is a drop in the bucket. Um, yeah. We know that one in four Americans in the United States of, of America is suffering from mental illness. I believe it's one in 10 are suffering, uh, I believe, from schizophrenia, or is it one in 25? I'm sorry, guys. I don't have the stats right in front of me right now. But I, but I will say a lot of mental health disorders are a lot more common than you believe they are. And that's whether we're discussing adults or children. I'm not going to get to, ch to children now. Um, me and Charity, uh, she doesn't know it yet, but we're going to be doing something with that really, really soon. But um, okay. let's talk about where, where do we go from here? And so one thing I want to talk about is um, uh, realizing that churches have to really begin to partner with Christian counselors. It's imperative that churches partner with Christian counselors, A, so that pastors have referrals for their members. A lot of times um, in churches, people are too embarrassed. Even if there are counselors within the local assembly, a lot of times people are embarrassed to share and divulge to people that know them, especially when it's a smaller church. And so it is a great idea. In fact, I think it is all, it is imperative that every pastor has a list of references uh, where members can go when they are dealing with uh, trauma or whatever different type of ailments and issues that are going to need some type of mental health professional. And so it's imperative that pastor ha pastors have those referrals on hand so that they can get people um, the help they need in a safe place. It also frees pastors up from uh, the burden of dealing with all these different issues when many times it goes above their head, especially when you're dealing with people that are dealing with severe mental illness and that people that are dealing with extreme trauma. Um, a lot of times, you know, it, it, it's imperative to have that have those uh, professional um, mental health mental health professionals on hand to be able to again refer out and get the people some help. It frees the pastor up so he can do the work of God and he can do the ministry. Because some pastors are finding themselves burnt out because they're trying to do everything. They're trying to be be all things to all men. And so you know we're we are one person. We're limited, and many times we have to realize we just need to operate and function where we belong. And so uh, having those having those leads and having those referrals av available will free pastors up to deal with the, their their main assignment. I like in the New Testament how um, they were asking, I believe, the apostles about uh, feeding the feeding the widows and different things like that. And they said, listen, find some men that are, you know, that are consecrated, sober, full of the Holy Ghost. Have them do that. Have them, you know, wait on tables. We got to do the work of the ministry. And so what I'm yeah. saying is many times there's a lot of things that need to be done, but pastors, especially senior pastors, they cannot do everything. And so this frees them up when they have uh, professional counselors on hand and that they can refer to so that they can do the work of the Lord and do the work of the ministry. And so um, that that's the piece I wanted to talk about. I just want to talk about how it's important for pastors to begin to connect with and uh, and utilize those resources because, um, you know, counselors are skilled at what they do. Don't think that it's just, you know, a, a talk on the couch. It's more than that. It's a skill. And especially those that are Christian counselors, they come with a grace and an anointing as well. And so, um, you know, let's not minimize what counselors do and really realize that it, counseling is powerful. And if you, I'm not going to get into that. So if you didn't watch the first week, go back and watch the first week. And you can hear what Charity and I were saying as far as, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the ministry of counsel, because counseling really truly is a ministry. Yes, it's a vocation. But for many, it's also it's also ministry because you are you are investing in a person's life. 
you're walking alongside them. You're investing in them to get to a place where they are, where they have the freedom that they need, getting them to a place where they're becoming whole again, getting them to a place where they are, are coming to a place of liberty, where they can get past the trauma and the pain and the bad experiences and all those different things. But I want to uh, switch it back to you, Charity. I want you to talk um, a little more about educating the body of Christ. And please make sure you mention um, the Faith and Mental Health Conference that's going to be coming up in January 2018. I can't, we can't hear you. Can't hear you at all. I'll be talking a little bit more, more about um, how the how to educate the body of Christ. Go ahead, Charity. Can you hear me? Yep, perfect. Okay, great. So, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of things. One of the things that, you know, because a lot of, Pastors, this is so brand new to them. A lot of leaders, this whole concept of addressing mental illness or mental health issues is so new to them. And I know a lot of them can feel so bombarded. A lot of them can feel, you know, and as we talk about, well, we've not, the church has not been addressing this. You know, they can feel like they're being attacked. They may feel like, you know, we're we're coming against them. And and let me tell you, we're, we're not. We're, we're doing this in love because of what we see. Um, as you know, I work in the field. I've been in the field for, for 16 years. Um, so, so I've seen so much. I've seen a lot of people who call on the name of Jesus are, are, are in bondage when it comes to their mental health. So understand that we're not trying to attack you. And, and I, I know from personal experience, there's a lot of passion when you those of us who are counselors, oftentimes we struggle in our in our local church wanting to use our gift, but being rejected because um, a lot of leaders are not open to someone else coming in and helping their flock. They take that ownership of their flock and they're not open to someone else coming in and, and trying to help. A lot of times they feel like we're, you know, we're trying to take over or they have a takeover spirit or they're just trying to influence the people and 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 you be led by God because I'm not going to say that there aren't people like that out there. But and so you be led by God and you you be discerning of who's who you're letting um you know help the people in your church or who you're letting giving that given that authority to, I, I believe that I understand. I, I'm, I'm totally with that, but understand that in this season, God is requiring that we do more in terms of helping people beyond just the layer, beyond just the outer appearance, um, beyond, beyond what we can see. He's requiring that we go deep into the inner parts of man the, so that healing can begin. And so one of the things that I would suggest that leaders do, because it has to start at the top, I would suggest that you go and get educated, especially if this is seeming like it's so much to you. It's seeming like it's a fall. You said, you're saying, I can relate a little bit to this, but I don't know. I've not been to school for this. Well, listen, we're not suggesting that you go to school and get your master's degree in counseling. It doesn't really take all that, but understand that there are little things that you can do. So some things like watching these webinars, watching these videos, there are many people who offer free resources so that you can little by little get educated about mental health. You may not learn every terminology. You may not know the theories that I know having gone to school and, and, and been in school for many years. You may not ever learn that, but you can learn the basic signs. So, you know, what do you do if someone tells you they're suicidal or homicidal? What do they, what do you do um, in your local area? Who do you call? I know Deandra can probably speak to liability um, and, 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 pastors are, you know, I'm afraid that they're going to come up being liable, especially if your member has come to you and said that they're suicidal. They're having thoughts to hurt themselves. They're having thoughts to kill themselves. And you've, you, you've laid hands on them, none of them all and said, go and be <laughs> by faith. <laughs> you know, um, and then they go and kill themselves because, you know, it's according to their faith and not say, you know, blame yourself. But these things happen. And as you know, a lot of our churches are connected with 501c3s. They're connected with all of these things and they can be held liable. 
And so at a basic level, I would encourage you to go and get educated. Um, there's the American Association of Christian Counseling. There's an organization called Light University, and they offer um, some certifications for you. If you're interested in, in doing something like that, if you're interested in at a very basic level, you as a leader being educated and, and knowing how to address at a basic level your parishioners who are suffering from mental illness. So I would I would say and reach out if you have a question and you know people like DeAndrea and I are available to you. Reach out to us. You have a question, you want a resource about your member, your family member, then reach out, you know. Um, no, we may not be your apostle. No, we may not be your bishop um, uh, in the head of your organization, but we are people who are knowledgeable. God has gifted us. God has given us a passion and an anointing for this. So it is so important that you would reach out to us or reach out to someone else to ask the question. Don't just walk around not knowing. And, and you know, we talked about the pride of man. We talked about that last week the pride of wanting to be all things to all people, knowing good and well, you don't even know what's going on with that person. But because of your pride, you won't refer that person out because you don't want to seem like you don't know. Well, that's pride. That's pride. And at that point, you're becoming, you're putting yourself as an idol. At that point, you're putting yourself in that place of God because you want to know all things. You, it's almost like you're saying, fall down and worship me. Um, and we know that God says he will have no other God before him. And so, you know, at a certain point, he will give us wisdom um, to refer out it, you know. And so I could go on and on about that. Um, and then if you can really quick, DeAndre, I know I'm shifting it back to you, but um, if you can talk quickly about the liability of, of leaders, I've, I've heard you talk about it one time before on your on one of your videos. Um just the liability of leaders, especially when it comes to someone saying they're suicidal and saying they're homicidal. Okay, gotcha. Okay, um, gotcha. Um, oh, I think you need to mute. Oh, I think you need to mute. One thing that's important One thing that's to, to realize is that... Um, how can I put it? It's, it's so important to, to realize there, there's a lot of things to understand as it relates to, to mental health and, and mental illness. And one thing about it is when you are unaware of something, when you're unversed in it, and when you know little, very little about it, you can't really say much about it. You know, I don't know enough about, um, you know, about, um, you know, cardiology to be given out, card you know, advice to people that that have that have heart disease they need to go to a cardiologist that's a specialist and so when it comes to mental health and mental illness there are specialists and so one thing about it is we have taken scripture sometimes and we have misconstrued that based on different uh, uh miracles that jesus performed that everybody that's mentally ill is demonized and so one mm -hmm. thing that's important to realize is that when you're dealing with mental mental illness uh, you're dealing with body, soul, and spirit. And so you have to, I like how Charity always says, you cannot deal with mental health and not deal with spiritual health. Because when you're dealing with mental health, a psychologist or a psychiatrist, well, I'm not going to go to psychiatrist. I'm just saying guys, psychologist. But uh, a, a psychiatrist is a medical doctor, for those that don't know. They're going to treat your symptoms based on a biological uh, model, and they're just going to you know, give you the right medicines to kind of curve and get you to a place of functioning. But a psychologist is going to come with, depend, they may come from different angles as far as their approach. But at the end of the day, they're dealing with you at a solical level. Always remember your, your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotion, what you will do, how you think, how you feel. And so, mm -hmm. um, but then there's also the part of the body. Because when you look at certain mental illnesses, there are changes to the brain. There are shiftings with the neurotransmitters within the brains, which are chemicals that are released. There are there can also be effects in the body um, as far as uh, your mobility, um, your your uh, your pulse, uh, your heart rate and all these different things. So what I'm trying to say is that mental illness can affect the three parts of man. And so a lot of times what happens is a lot of leaders are telling people, you know, um, you know, don't take, you know, don't take that medicine and, you know, telling, you know, 
prophets are telling people to throw their medicine in the garbage. I've, I've had, see, I've had the people reach out to me all from all over the United States. I have, my inbox has been filled with people in and out of the psych ward all over the place. Well, the, the preacher told me to throw the medicine away and this, this, and this, and all these different things, male and female. These people are at home in a full blown, uh, uh, full blown paranoid. They're, they're paranoid. They're seeing things, they're hearing things, and the churches tell them to throw their pills away, you're okay. One thing I always admonish people is if you don't know what medicine is doing, you probably shouldn't tell someone to stop taking it. What happens right. is some people, um, you know, and charity works in a psych hospital. That's actually my dream. I've always wanted to work in a psych hospital, but I'll move past that. <laughs> but um, there are some people that when they are not properly treated, they will swallow objects. They are. They have yeah. suicidal suicide ideation. They they will constantly try to kill themselves. They're cutting themselves. They will try to drink poison and do all type of harm to themselves. And there are also other people that deal with um, hallucinations and auditory uh, auditory uh, uh, hallucinations, hearing and seeing things. And then you have people, and we know a lot of things are demonic. But I'm not going to go there today. Y'all watch the, watch the video on deliverance. And then there's also those that <laughs> that um that are delusional, delusional to the point that they they'll say you know they think the govern government is out to get them or and mm -hmm. or uh, they believe that somebody is watching them. And so a lot of times, so people that are mentally ill a lot of times are more harmful, can cause more harm. Usually, are a greater danger of causing harm to themselves than others. And so what I'm saying is, I'm gonna give you the skinny. You don't want to tell somebody to stop taking their medicine and they go kill themselves. Because if mm -hmm. you are, if somebody finds out or if someone knows that you said that, you can be found liable. Although you thought you were doing a good thing, although you thought you were doing the right thing, you can be held liable. And we are living in a day where people are, are you know, suing the church over tambourines. So certainly somebody will sue a church over something as serious as that. And so it's just yeah. important to realize that, yes, God is the healer. There are people with testimonies, dynamic testimonies. I got them right on my Facebook friends list. They're, they're, uh, they're, they're doing the work of the Lord, all these different things. But it's important that if a person really is healed, let it be verified by a professional. If a person is really healed from cancer, let it be verified by the doctor. And so it's just important that we realize we can, churches and pastors can put themselves in a place of liability because there are people, you can look at the news where people have said voices told them to drown their children, voices told yeah. them to shoot their children. You don't want to be the reason that somebody stops taking their medicine. They start hearing voices again. Those voices tell them mm -hmm. to kill the kids. And then you're the, you're the reason why that happened. So we just want to be careful and realize that, yes, we know there are testimonies of healing. We, I don't, I, and please don't get it wrong. I believe in the power of God. Let, let's get it. I want to clarify some things because sometimes people think that we're coming with carnality. It's, it's not carnality. It's wisdom. I believe in the, car, the power of God. I believe in casting out devils. I believe in all mm -hmm. of that. But I also believe in if someone is healed, let it be verified by a doctor before we're telling people to stop taking their medicine and, and different things like that. It's just a wisdom thing. It's just a wisdom thing. Because we can, we can be the reason that somebody is in and out of the psych hospital. We can be the reason that somebody is constantly unstable and unable to really become um, um, uh, functional again. Because severe mm -hmm. mental illness is very debilitating for, to people. And if you don't understand what a person is really going through, then, you know, it's, it's definitely not a good idea to do things like that. But Charity, I wanna, I'm, I'm going to give it back to you. I want you to talk about, um, I had asked you to talk about it earlier. You forgot. I want you to talk about the, the faith and, and mental health conference. I want you to talk about that because I want people to know that this is coming up next year and it's an opportunity for, uh, yeah. for deliverance ministers to be trained and get some understanding in mental health. And it's also a time for mental health uh, um, providers to understand the spirit realm mm -hmm. and deliverance because, you know, both sides have to be educated. You know, we don't want we don't want people and I've seen it. We don't want people going through deliverance 10 times and, and folks is passing them from deliverance minister to deliverance minister when they really need a counselor. Mm -hmm. And then we don't yeah. want, you know, people saying that they're a Christian counselor and they they don't operate in anything. They can't recognize when deliverance is needed to get breakthrough. They don't recognize okay. that deliverance is hindering a person from being able to really break free. 
And so um, I want you to talk a little bit about that so that people understand that what you're offering is a tool and, and, and it's just, it's so needed and so important in the body. Absolutely. Um, you know, last year, this year, earlier this year was the our first mental health and faith conference and it was it was something there were there were many ministries many organizations that were part of it deandrea bolden ministries was a part of it spirit wind healing ministries was a part of it um we had um powerhouse doctor um sharon what is Matt. sharon Tell me her last name. Mancha. Mancha. Dr. Sharon Mancha, who is a trauma expert, who is also a, 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 a powerhouse evangelist and, and prophetess. Um, but so we, we had that mixture. We had um, um, Pastor Deborah Smith. We had um, Minerva Servosa, who is a nurse practitioner, who is a believer, um, who, who was able to give us that balance. We had myself. We had um, Pastor Linda Wright. Pastor Linda Wright, um, we had people that were that were coming in to talk about what we don't talk about, which is mental mental health and faith, mental illness in the body of Christ, mental illness among believers. And it was and it was amazing the way the way the Lord put it on my heart to do it. Um, he allowed people just to just flood in DeAndrea. I think you saw the post on, on Facebook and you said you had to be there. She and I had never met, but the Lord really connected us in that way. Um, she just, she showed up. I'm like, I'll pick you up from the airport. And so that's really how it worked. But people were blessed. Um, we had people fly in from New York. That was amazing. DeAndre flew in from Michigan. We had people of all all race, all backgrounds. We had people of all ages come in um, and participate in this free conference. Um, it was it was just so amazing, and, and the power of God was there. So we educated, and we had you know we were we were taking notes, and it was it was definitely an educational session. But the power of God was there. We had a, a man walk in, not off the street, but he walked in. He had heard about something, and he came in, had no idea what God was going to do for him that that day. Um, and so it was so amazing, and we are so excited that we are going to be offering this again. In January of next year, we're going to do it right, right around the same time. It's going to be the very last weekend in January. We're going to we're um, we're hoping to get those same some of the same people in to support it. We're hoping to get some more some other people who have not been who are not in this first one to come out, especially those in trauma, those in, who can talk about suicide. Um, so so we are so excited. We're gearing up um, to get a venue, to get the speakers in. We're so excited to get the deliverance ministers in so that we can provide people with a balance. This is op going to be open to everyone across the United States and internationally. Um, and if you want to know about, if you want to look back on the videos from last year, then you certainly can. They are posted on the Faith Solutions, the mental health page, and you'll see some of the stuff that that we did, some of the stuff that we talked about. It was, it was, I mean, it was amazing. It was just amazing. It was just amazing. But this is so needed. This is so needed in the body of Christ. And so our aim was definitely to educate, to empower people. Um, we had a lot of, we had psychologists that, that came. We had nurses, we had teachers. And I mean, people from so many backgrounds, we had leaders, pastors that came to get this information because they're saying, listen, I'm dealing with this. I'm dealing with this in my in my home. I'm dealing with this on my job. I'm dealing with this in my, in my church. And I need to be educated. I need to know what to do with this there's no more time out, there's time is out for for leading people away um and saying i'm sorry i can't help you or or demonizing them or isolating them because we don't know what to do that's why so many people feel like they're isolated in the body of christ because we don't have that anointing to help them um, but God says, I'm giving you power over all the power of the enemy. And so we are definitely going at this again um, to empower the body of Christ, to empower people to say, listen, he, he's given us power. And so I'm I'm really excited about about what's going to be happening in next year, January of next year. Awesome, 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 awesome. And um, one thing, uh, Charity, while you were talking, one thing I want to admonish, especially to those that are watching. 
if you are one that know that you have been dealing with and battling um, mental health issues, um, you know, as we're talking about where to go from here, be in a place where you feel free to be connected to the body of Christ. One thing about it, and I know I'm getting a little bit off topic, but I think this is important that people realize that um, it, it's important to stay connected with other believers that are strong. Because when you are in a place where you're weak and when you're broken, the last thing you need to do is isolate yourself. But many times people that battle uh, a variety of mental health issues, whether it's depression or, or um, you know, anxiety, you know, all type of different things, people will begin to isolate themselves because they may feel mm-hmm. overwhelmed. Because mm-hmm. that's the thing about mental illness. It, it's almost like it crushes you. It, it's like a weight. It's debilitating. It makes it hard to really be able to function and keep healthy relationships. And for some people, you know, depending on the severity of the mental health disorder, it's hard for people to even be able to keep a job um, and and all those different things. And so I want to admonish people to, um, number one, if you are in need of mental health services, please inbox Space Solutions to Mental Health or inbox myself. We have resources. I have people that I can um that I can uh, refer you to. Charity can have people that she can refer you to, and so you do. You're not alone. You don't have to walk alone. You don't have to go through this alone. You're not alone. And so it's imperative to not only get help, but to also stay connected to the body of believers because your recovery is also in your remaining connected to God. And so while you're recovering from a soulful level, you also need to be built up on a spiritual level. And so that's why it's important to um, to remain um, in fellowship with other believers and stay connected to the body of Christ. And so again, to those that are tuning in, please share, please share this video. Please help us get the word out. Um, this is our last week of the Mental Health Awareness Series because May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And so, um, you know, the Lord put, placed this on, I believe, Charity's heart. And so this is what we're, we're doing for this month. And so today we're just talking about um, where do we go from here? You know, we've talked about counseling, we've talked about deliverance, we've talked about clergy and crisis. But how do we put boots on the ground and move forward? And one of the most important ways we do that is by educating believers. Charity just talked about the faith, um, the faith and mental health conference. Charity, can you mute me? Charity just talked about the faith and, and mental health conference. And, um, you know, for, for some, it may be actually taking the step and getting help, whether you are a believer or, uh, or lay or, or, or clergy, you know, putting pride aside, putting one's feelings aside and actually stepping out there to get help. And, um, and, you know, just becoming, you know, be- becoming aware of us being educated so that we recognize mental health symptoms. I think I'm, I'm going to post some because it's important that people can recognize the symptoms of mental illness because sometimes um, people want to be helpful, but they don't know how to be. And so I'm going to post some of the symptoms for uh, for mental symptoms of mental illness or mental health, such as uh, sudden weight loss or weight gain, uh, a person losing pleasure in things that normally would give them pleasure, um, you know, a, a drastic change in mood. Uh, there, there's a lot of different things, um, a lot of different symptoms because there's a lot of different mental health disorders. But again, with where we go from here, we educate ourselves and we educate ourselves, which is so important, not just for pastors, not just for clergy, but really for believers, period. It is important that people in the body of Christ, period, are aware of mental health issues, because even if it's not you or even if it's not the person next to you, you in the pew at your church, you have family, you have spouses, you have children, you have parents, you have siblings. There, I guarantee if one in four people in the United States is dealing with mental health issues, somebody around you, if there's five people in the room, somebody is mentally, somebody's dealing with mental health issues, that statistic is very accurate. And so we have to realize that um, mental, mental, uh, mental health disorders uh, will manifest different in different people. And so you have to realize two people can be schizophrenic and not have the same symptom. And so don't Absolutely. expect mental health disorders to look the same from person to person to person and also realizing that there's a plethora of mental health issues. 
physical health, uh, physical health disorders. You know, one person may have um, um, a kidney issue. Somebody else could have a heart issue. Somebody else could have a, a brain related um, illness. And so it's just important to realize there's different types and there's different symptoms of different things like this because we want to be we want to be aware. We want to be conscious, not just in church, but also in our homes, on, in our occupation. We want to be able to recognize when somebody is, is maybe in a place of being suicidal. We want to be able to recognize those things because we don't want to continue to see people in and out of the church kill themselves around us. And so, mm-hmm. um, Cherry, I'm, I'm going to hand it back to you. I want you to um, to kind of talk a, a little bit about the other piece you wanted to talk about um, this week for dealing with um, mental health and evangelism. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so one of the things that we have to know, we have to know that this is not just, uh, this is not just uh, something that's going to pass by. This is going to be here. This is going to be here. And our ability to address this need is a part of evangelism. It is a part of that whole picture of kingdom work. It really is. You know, we, we're looking at it separately sometimes, but really we need to ask God to give us that vision to see it as kingdom work. This is a part of discipleship. This is part of evangelism. You know, just like we have our soup kitchens and we meet people at their need. I think that's so important. We, we have our we have our, our outreach programs. We do it all. We feed the poor. We feed the hungry. We clothe the, the, the poor. We, we tend to the widows. You know, we do all these things. This is part of that. This is part of meeting the people where they're at, is where, where it matters the most, which, which is in the mind, which is in the mind. Um, you know, we have to do this. We have to do this. And we are charging. Um, and I believe the Holy Spirit is charging the body of Christ at this time, is charging the leaders to not just be stagnant. You know, um, everything that we've been doing, yes, we've been leading people to the Lord, but that God is calling us to go higher, go up to the mountain. Um, he's tell, He's charging us to go up the mountain. And so this is the piece of it. This mental health part of it is it has to be a piece of your discipleship program, your evangelism program. It has to be the the, the counselor and the, the, we have to walk hand in hand um, in order to lead people to Christ. You know, a lot of people come to church. We talked about this before. They come to church, they come to the house of God and they get that emotional reaction from that first day, that sh- that that emotional outpouring. They cry, they feel um, this, this breakthrough temporarily. Um, but because we've not addressed the issue deep down, a lot of them are falling away and that they're they come to church looking for that same emotional reaction Sunday after Sunday to feel better and they're not getting it because that's not how Holy Spirit works he's not working off of our emotions he requires that we seek him and get that healing and so we have to include this part in discipleship we have to address the mind of the people and so you know this is part of you know in Mark 5 when Jesus delivered the man. There was a man in the tomb, a boy in the tomb that was cutting himself. Um, And if we look in verse, if we look in verse um, 18, because Jesus delivered him, because this man was delivered him. If we look in verse Matthew 5, verse 18, this guy, this man came back to Jesus. And because he was so impressed and because of the change that the deliverance that had taken place in his life, this man had been tormented by legions of demons. And because of the the, the change that had taken place in his life, he was so impressed that he begged Jesus to, to go with him. He said, Jesus, I want to go with you. They were departing on the ship. And he said, Jesus, I want to go with you. So Jesus, in that deliverance, convinced him to know him. Does that make sense? He convinced because of his healing, because of his ability to address this guy's mental health issue. Then this man wanted to know more about Jesus. He wanted to, in fact, he wanted not only to know more about Jesus, he wanted to follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Is that that making sense? So 
our ability as a body of Christ, and we are to be like him, and we are representative of who Jesus is, our ability to address these mental health issues is not only going to impress them, it's not only going to kill them temporarily, but it's going to it's going to want make them want to know Jesus, and it's going to make them want to follow him. Okay, so that's that evangelism piece of it that we 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 have to see the big picture in this. This is this is when we're talking about souls, when we're talking about evangelism, when we're talking about the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. You know, Lord, make me a laborer in this area. This is the area of my anointing. Um, You know, this is the area of of. of of anointing for me, Lord, let me be a labor in this. And so we we're missing out on on a p- portion of the harvest because we're not addressing this. And I believe that as we as churches and leaders would humble themselves, allow that counselor to come in, allow that follow up with the counselor, especially for those that come from that traumatic past. You know, we're asking people to come to the Lord, but we're not teaching them how. Sure. You know. And so this is going to be a portion of it, renewing their mind. This is going to be how well, I got saved. I, I did the sinner's prayer. I, 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 I told him to come into my heart. Um, but how do I walk this thing out? And that's where this counseling ministry. And so the, the, w- what I'm trying to say is we need, we need churches to develop these counseling ministries. They may start out small. We're not telling you to have a build a wing. We're not, <laughs> we're not saying build a wing. That would be great. That would be great. We're not telling you to build a wing on, but we're saying at a basic level, allow those that are that have the gift to do this, to be able to follow. I believe, and I've always been of the mindset that the church should be the go-to per- place for everything. I, I've always believed that the church should be the go-to place for counseling. I, when it comes to business, there's so many business-minded people in the church. I, I believe when we when we're talking about publishers, when we're talking about even dressmakers, and we're talking about cake businesses and and financial advice, I believe that the church should be our go-to place. I believe the Mormons have got that. They they they've they they they've already accepted that. You know where they go in within their their local community for everything, not to say that we're to be like them, but the concept of being able to go into our, go into our church body for what we need. We don't, we shouldn't have to go out into other places. We shouldn't have to go to non-Christian counselors to get, um, to get help. We shouldn't have to do that. We should be able to go and right into our local body. If we would humble ourselves and allow, if our leaders will humble themselves and allow counselors to work in their ministry, uh, if you would educate yourself, then th- this was this is that piece of this is that piece of evangelism that we're that we're missing. This is that piece that that we are charging ourselves, we are charging listeners, we're charging leaders. Um, we want to help you implement that. You know, I know that I'm open. I know DeAndrea is open. There's so many of us that if you need help developing this in your ministry, um then let us know, you know, and I know that's something that DeAndre and I can develop uh, something to help leaders set this up in their church. We can certainly develop that step by step. How do I set up a counseling ministry? How do I, where do I go to get the people trained? Where do I go to get these certifications? And how do I develop this, this list of resources? You know, how do I contact the crisis line in my local community? You know, how do I, where do I go? Who do I call if it's something beyond my scope? Um, beyond beyond what I can do for someone, you know, who do I call? We have to be able to know these things, and we have to ask help, ask for help. Um, this is part of evangelism. We, you know, no, no, you know, there was a thing in the education system with President Obama: no child left behind, behind, no soul left behind, no soul left behind. Because listen, everybody, everybody's not going to come into the body of Christ. Well done. You know, they're not going to they're not going to come. A lot of people have grandmas and aunties that are able to walk them through that process. And many people don't. They don't have they, they're desperate to know God. But because of, of what's tormenting them, then we drop the ball on them because we're not able to address those deeper issues. And so that's really, you know, where do we go from here? Here, Where do we go from here? Because I think trainings, I think conferences are great. I think it's wonderful, but at a certain point, we have to begin to implement those skills that we have been 
pushing out. You know, we, we at a certain point, we have to come beyond the four walls of training and actually implement these, these, these things. And I believe that as we as we take that step, as we begin, you know, there are many miracles in the body where God said, position yourself. Um, you have no need to fight in this battle. There's many examples of that where even um, the, the the armies killed themselves and, and God said, go in and get the spoils. You know, God will provide the souls if we would just, I believe if we set up what is needed, God is going to send in the harvest. He's going to send in the people because we have what they need. But if we are waiting for them to, if we're waiting and saying, well, they'll get it somewhere else, you know, they will, they will get it somewhere else. You know, they're, they're going to get it somewhere else. And it's just not going to be what we want them to get. It's not going to be productive to their souls. It's not going to be um, because the world is waiting. The world has stuff set up there. I mean, I can go on my Facebook and events page and I'll see so many things that are demonic, but people are going to them because they want some type of relief. They want some type of help. And if the body of Christ would step up and say, no, I'm taking my authority back. I'm taking authority back. God has given me authority to address these issues. God has given me authority um, to tread upon serpents, to, 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 if I touch any daily thing, it will not harm me. If, if I would acknowledge that God has given me this authority and, and I begin to act on it, then we're going to see the harvest come in. We're going to see soul safe. So where do we go from here? Where do we go from here? We charge you leader. We charge you pastor. I charge you apostle um, to take this to the next level. Take this to the next level. You know, we're so concerned and I'm almost I'm almost done, but we're so concerned about building these mega churches. You know, I've seen people with 20 people want to build a mega church like that is the dream of the church. That is the end all build this mega building, but you don't have the people to fill it up. And so how do we get the people to, to fill it up? We don't just go to the other churches that already have people that are, you know, thriving in ministry, God's requiring us that we go into all the world and preach the gospel, go and go into, go to the ones that go into the mental health hospitals, evangelize them, go onto the streets, go into our homeless shelters and evangelize them and tell them, listen, I have what you need here in the body of Christ. Amen. Amen. We're almost, we're almost done. We got a, probably a couple minutes left. I just want to drive home that, you know, what, what we're saying is that it's, it's all about, you know, people being healthy and people being whole body, soul, and spirit. I like how mm -hmm. it says it. And I believe Thessalonians five and 23, it said, I pray that the God of peace would sanctify you holy spirit, soul, and body. Those are the three parts of man. And so God wants us to be whole, to be healthy and to be healed in our spirit, our soul, and in our body. And so, you know, one thing about it, when it comes to war, you know, you can't win a war with a bunch of broken soldiers that, that are, um, that aren't mobile, that are broke down. And so it's the same thing in the, in the spirit realm. You know, we want to tell people to pursue their destiny and find their purpose. And these people are so hurt, they can barely function in their, their day-to-day -day life, their day-to-day -day routine. And so we have to recognize beyond, you know, what these emotional highs and, you know, shouting and, you know, Write the, write the name on the paper, ball it up, spin around five times, slap your neighbor and all that stuff, you know, and, and different things that we see in the church culture. They are not yielding the results of people really getting the healing and the wholeness that they need. And so all we're saying is that it's time for people to be able to deal with, uh, 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 you know, whatever is bothering them or whatever is going on internally. Because remember, mental health is your emotional and psychological well-being. Is it well with your soul? And so people can have a million dollars and be broken. And so a person can have everything that the, the white picket fence, the dog, the, the spouse, the cars, the, the kids and still be a broken, miserable person. And so that's where that's what we're talking about. The aspect of people really having some for real freedom, some for real healing, some for real uh, breakthrough and, and deliverance. So I just wanted to take a, a take a moment. Um, I know Charity was talking about the the faith and faith and uh, faith and mental health conference coming up in January, and I have some things that are going to be coming up um, in in 2018 later later down uh, in, in two, 2018 as well. I'm going to be doing a Be Healed conference because mm -hmm. I have a, a mandate and a and a passion 
to see people really be to really be healed, really be restored and really uh, being a place where God can use them. You know, we're trying to get people to use their gifts and they're still stuck at a rate from the age of six. They're they're 40 years old now. And so we have to realize that yeah. it's, uh, it, I, we have to be more concerned with the person's soul than their gift. We have to be more mm-hmm. concerned with them being healed than them being platformed. We have to be yeah. more concerned with a person getting to a place where their soul, where, where God is really on the inside of them than, than being concerned with them uh, being booked, going from what they say, from going from book to o- overlook to book. I mean, all that stuff is cool and fine. But at the end of the day, you don't want to do, you don't want to be booked, booked and flying all over the world and you're a broken person. And so we have to be concerned with the state of a person's soul, a state of their inner mm-hmm. man, a state of their mental being. Are, where are they at mentally? You know, people are, are preaching all across the country. And then after they finish preaching, they're suicidal. And so some, mm-hmm. some things are spiritual because people don't understand warfare and they don't understand the attack of the enemy. And then some things are just straight up. People are dealing with mental health related issues and they mm-hmm. don't know how to deal with it because a lot of times the way we cope with things, uh, especially those that have been traumatized, in many cases, our way of coping is we make more decisions that cause us more harm and more pain. And so we'll mm-hmm. be dealing with pain that happened to us in childhood but the decisions that we make as adults cause us even more pain. And so a lot of times we don't have good uh, coping skills. We don't have the ability to really think things out properly in order to make good decisions. Because remember, everything's not the devil. Your ability to make decisions is on your own. You have a free will. But a lot of times when we are traumatized, when, when, our, when our spirit man is, is crushed and broken and our, our soul is all bruised and vexed, we're not in a place where we are clear in our mind to really make good decisions. Mm-hmm. And so I, I also wanted to those that are on here, I wanted to, to let people know, please, if you haven't got it, the, this is a book that I wrote and released last year. The book is Destroying Mental Illness in the Church. Um, mm-hmm. I really believe it. it, it ha- I know it has been and, and it still um, still is being a blessing to a lot of different people. It's available on Amazon. It's available on my website, which is DeAndreaBolden.com. It's also available on Arsen, um, at the Arsenal Bookstore as well. And so please uh, get your copy. It's not what you think. Don't be, don't be, uh, don't, uh, uh, what is it? Don't, don't have a, um, a, 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 an idea of what you think it is, but be open to it and really mm-hmm. see, you know, what it, see it for what it is. I, I believe it's really a blessing. Um, and I've gotten a lot of good feedback about the book. And so please mm-hmm. check that out. Um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to turn it back over to Charity because our time is just about up. And so I'm going to let her have the final words and get her ready to go ahead and close us out. And so, again, thank you to those that are tuned in. Please, again, share, 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 share this so people can see the replay. Please let people know that the recap is out there. And the other previous weeks that we've done are on Faith Solutions to Mental Health page. And like Charity was saying earlier, the conference that was in January those videos are also on the page as well. God bless you guys. Charity, go ahead. Well, thank you so much to everybody that listened in. Um, we we are here to answer your questions. We are here to help you on this journey as, you know, whether whether it's you that's suffering with a mental illness, whether you're a leader, whoever you are, whatever position you hold, and this is something that um, is impacting you, mental illness, mental health issues. We just want to let you know that there is help. Um, this is this is not something that's going to go away. This is something that God is charging the body of Christ um, and believing counselors, believing therapists, believing psychiatrists. We are out here to help you, you know, to give you that balance um, to, to, to help address your mental warfare through through the spirit realm, which is where he gives us power. Um, you know, and we could go on and both DeAndre and I are also preachers. So we could, we could really, really talk to you about this. Um, <laughs> we are, we are here to help you. Um, we want you to know that God wants this healing for you, for your mind, for your soul, for your, for your life. He wants, he wants this for you. He wants you to be healed. God does not want us to be tormented. Um, he wants us to be balanced. He wants us to live, um, 
uh, abundantly. You know, he doesn't want us to be paranoid. He doesn't want us to be suspicious. He doesn't want us walking in fear and torment and anxiety. Um, he says, cast down imaginations and every high thing that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God and bring it into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. And that's where he's calling us in this in this day and time. And so we just want to let you know that Faith Solutions to Mental Health, we're out there. We're going to be doing many, many more things for you, many, many more um, videos, many, many more educational webinars. One of the ones that I want to do coming up soon is, is just a launch from my book, I Am Tamar, but the spiritual personality of emotional abuse. Um, I think that's something that we need to address again in the body of Christ. There was this wave um, back when, when it talked about emotional abuse. Um, but I want to talk about the spiritual, the spiritual personality of emotional abuse, because that is one place where the enemy of taxes is in our love and relationships. So, um, so I just want to admonish you to get help, to get in your word. Um, but, we are here. We are here. Leaders who you're struggling with this in your congregation, we are here. Um, I can't say that enough that we are here and we want we want to help you. So I'm praying for you. Um, even I'm, I'm just praying for you. Just know that we are praying for you. There's so many great things coming up. And um, just reach out to us for resources. And thank you. Andrea, so much for these four weeks. I know, um, you know, this is taking a lot of prayer and a lot of time out of our day, but I want to thank you for that and God bless you all. Bye-bye.